contemporary Latin is the form of the Latin language used from the end of the 19th century through to the present. Various kinds of contemporary Latin can be distinguished. On the one hand there is its symbolic survival in areas like taxonomy and others as the result of the widespread presence of the language in the new Latin era. This is normally found in the form of mere words or phrases used in the general context of other languages. On the other hand, there is the use of Latin as a language in its own right as full-fledged means of expression. Living or spoken Latin, being the most specific development of Latin in the contemporary context, is the primary subject of this article. Token Latin, as a relic of the great importance of New Latin as the formerly dominant international lingua franca down to the 19th century in a great number of fields. Latin is still present in words or phrases used in many languages around the world, and some minor communities use Latin in their speech. Mottos The official use of Latin in previous eras has survived at a symbolic level in many mottos that are still being used and even coined in Latin. To this day, old mottos like E Pluribus Unum found in 1776 on the seal of the United States, along with the new Coeptus and Novus Ordo Seclorum, and adopted by an Act of Congress in 1782, are still in use. Similarly current pound sterling coins are minted with the Latin inscription Elizabeth II DG Reg FD. The official motto of the European Union, adopted as recently as 2000, is the Latin in Varietate Concordia. Similarly to the multilingual European Union, the motto on the Canadian Victoria Cross is in Latin due to Canada's bilingual status. Fixed phrases Some common phrases that is still in use in many languages have remained fixed in Latin, like the well-known dramatis Pisoni or habeas corpus. In science in fields as varied as mathematics, physics, astronomy, medicine, pharmacy, and biology, Latin still provides internationally accepted names of concepts, forces, objects, and organisms in the natural world. The most prominent retention of Latin occurs in the classification of living organisms and the binomial nomenclature devised by Carolus Linnaeus. Although the rules of nomenclature used today allow the construction of names which may deviate considerably from historical norms, another continuation is the use of Latin names for the constellations and celestial objects, as well as planets and satellites, whose surface features have been given Latin selenographic toponyms since the 17th century. Probably the most recent innovation in this realm is the proposition of the Flemish astrophysicist Gerard Bodifi to give Latin names to 1,000 prominent galaxies in a catalogue of named galaxies. These names follow the binomial nomenclature system and thus consist of a first part, identifying the galaxy, and a second part naming the constellation in which the galaxy is located in the sky. For example, M87, conspicuous for its plasma jet, in this system becomes Jaculatrix virginis, meaning thrower of or in Virgo, and the famous tadpole galaxy Gyrinus draconis, meaning tadpole of, in Draco. This system aims to honor the most impressive objects in the universe with more than meaningless and uninspired codes and to take them out of the specialist databases and bring them into the reach of daily human consciousness, in the same way as only named people, places etc. really exist in human minds. However, modern astronomers are not easily convinced to use such a system. Symbols for many of those chemical elements of the periodic table known in ancient times reflect and echo their Latin names, like O for Aurum and Fe for Ferrum. Vernacular vocabulary Latin has also contributed a vocabulary for specialized fields such as anatomy and law which has become part of the normal, non-technical vocabulary of various European languages. Latin continues to be used to form international scientific vocabulary and classical compounds. In fact, more than 56% of the vocabulary still used in English today derives ultimately from Latin, either directly or through French. Ecclesiastical Latin The Catholic Church has continued to use Latin, as in preceding centuries. Two main areas can be distinguished. 
One is its use for the official version of all documents issued by Vatican City, which has remained intact to the present. Although documents are first drafted in various vernaculars, the official version is written in Latin by the specific Latin letters office. The other is its use for the liturgy, which has been diminished after the Second Vatican Council of 1962-65, but seems to have recently seen some resurgence sponsored in part by Pope Benedict XVI. After the Church of England published the Book of Common Prayer in 1559, a 1560 Latin edition was published for use at universities such as Oxford and the leading public schools where the liturgy was still permitted to be conducted in Latin, and there have been several Latin translations since. Most recently a Latin edition of the 1979 USA Anglican Book of Common Prayer has appeared. Academic Latin Latin has also survived to some extent in the context of classical scholarship. Some classical periodicals, like Namosna or the German Hermes, to this day accept articles in Latin for publication. Latin is used in most of the introductions to the critical editions of ancient authors in the Oxford Classical Text series, and it is also nearly always used for the apparatus criticus of ancient Greek and Latin texts. The University Orator at the University of Cambridge makes a speech in Latin marking the achievements of each of the honorans at the annual honorary degree congregations, as does the Public Orator at the Ancenia Ceremony at the University of Oxford. Harvard and Princeton also have Latin salutatory commencement addresses every year. The Charles University in Prague and many other universities around the world conduct the awarding of their doctoral degrees in Latin. Other universities and other schools issue diplomas written in Latin. In addition to the above, Brown, Suony, and Bard College also hold in Latin a portion of their graduation ceremonies. The famous hymn Gaudé Musigich is acknowledged as the anthem of academia and is sung at university opening or graduation ceremonies throughout Europe.